out as well, and that's, I feel, more of a jungle ban for Curse than it is actually going to Boy Boy. Yeah, Dominate's pretty flexible in the jungle, we'll say. He has played uh, a bunch of different champions. Wukong, definitely one of the other... Brought that guy out. You know, less used, but very powerful champions. It really depends on, uh, you know, what kind of strategy Curse they're going to use on the day. Because they can easily play standard and play tanky meta mm. and just go with strong front line. But they can also go full assassin on you and look for snowballs. Yep. Thresh being picked up. Really... No bans, not no bans, but less bans being focused for supports as we go through these games. And we see Bloodwater picking up Sona, which nobody else is. So these guys like to fall back to the Thresh. Still in the top tier. Yeah, Thresh has been first picked a lot. Uh, still a very strong champion. You can't really get around the utility of Lantern. That nobody else can bring anything like that to the table. So that uniqueness uh, really doing a lot for them. And the Caitlyn, highly prioritized in this specific matchup. Is actually first picked. Cop will be quite happy with that. And I think Dignitas really the only other team that's been focusing an AD carry to start off. And Cop has been playing quite well. He was making moves on Lucian the other day during 3v, 3v2 ganks mm -hmm. that they were able to counter. Mm -hmm. As Caitlyn, definitely going to be looking um, for tower damage. So that duo is probably going to go to the bottom lane as um, a lot of people are making that standard now. And an Annie... Caitlyn Lane has ridiculous, like, ridiculously long range mm -hmm. from their auto attacks and uh, great harass. As we've seen, the Annies that start out with Q instead of W, they don't charge up their W for the stun um, and just go for early lane harass. Spamming Qs on you with a Dorange ring is going to yeah. get them the early shove that they want. It's been a while since yeah. Sneaky brought out the Draven. So that was what he started out on. Yep. Um, and he's going right back to this. It's a very snowbally champion. It's actually C9 that are going a little bit more snowball here as they have the high pressure early jungle in Elise and they have the AD carry that if you come down there and get an early gank for him, he can easily come back to lane with a straight BF sword at like six minutes, five, six minutes even. Crushing power of catching those axe. And, uh, oh, not gonna do it. 24 seconds left on the clock for Curse. We see that Elise was picked up for Meteos. Really, he is in comfort zone. That's his pretty much top tier pick right now for his jungle. Meteos has only played by an Elise so far. It's the only junglers he's going with. And that's considered by a lot of people, as we saw in the video, you know, top tier. Those two right. plus Olaf. That's, those are the only things that he's been going back to. Meanwhile, as we said, Dominate branching out. He's following some of those other paths here. Wukong built full damage. I really love in this new patch. Because of the changes to the Spirit Stones, where you get health and mana back in the jungle, if you go damage, then it helps you a lot because yep. you'll be coming out full health no matter what anyway. So I think the Spirit of the Elder Lizard has really shot up for me. You know, it used to be the Ancient Golem was ahead above everything else, but I really like that Elder Lizard one now, and Wukong uses it very well. We'll see if he can do it. Looks like he'll be with the team as, again, Quaz is going to be off doing that Jack split farming, split pushing, I should say, and farming. But I was going to say, we haven't seen High's LeBlanc, and that just went all the way through. Ooh, LeBlanc locked in. Boy Boy has actually played five different champions in five games so far, yeah. so you know he has no pattern that you can follow. LeBlanc is a pretty good all-around pick, though, because she has assassination potential on pretty much uh, anybody. anybody. It's also been a very time. long time since we've seen this rumble. We talked about balls earlier. Yep. He sort of went back to his old handful of champions that he used to use. Remember the game that they kept banning Renekton against balls, and he's like, all right, I'll pick rumble over and over. And we asked him in the interview, he's like, I don't know why they don't think I'm a factor on rumble. And... He's one of those players, Balls himself, that mentally can go behind in the early game and will still have a great impact late game. It's an interesting matchup here, too. If he takes that rumble, you know, the reason they take it so much is because Cloud9 loved those dragon control, uh, the dragon fights very early, and they bring him for that ultimate. Going up against Jax, though, towards the later game, Jax is going to be trying to get uh, just a lot of farm for himself, a little bit more selfish play so he can be that split pusher. Whereas, if Rumble keeps joining team fights and going yep. to Dragons and leaving lanes, it's going to allow Jax to get that solo farm up, and it's going to be the split pushing power versus the team oriented build. We see the Vladimir being locked in here. I think it was Benny with uh, XDG 
who would use this, they use it as like the kind of damage damage amplification composition. Mm -hmm. And it just really works out great with the Hemo Plague, and you got Cyclone spinning on around that. Should yeah. be an interesting comp. Two pretty good AoEs right yeah. there. Uh, the Wukong Ultimate, it's, you really need to get off a good one. Um, and it's not that easy, because yeah. the long range isn't really there. You have to use your invisibility to get in, mm -hmm. and then uh, pop that thing off in the middle. Let's see if they can get into range for it. It's going to happen at least once or twice during the game. But as the teams load onto the rift, let's check out who you think is going to come out on top. And according to LOLesports.com, 75% of you think Cloud9 are going to fly off with the win. And I think that actually is a little low to me considering, you know, the Cloud9 fan base that has been coming back. But maybe Curse has really done, you know, numbers for themselves. And people 75%? Get behind them. Still definitely. It's still very high. Yeah. But look at the percentage we had last game, right? Uh-huh. It was like a I 94. Mean, I think that's the highest percentage that we've had. Here, right. Yeah. NA had the uh, 95, or EU had the 95, I should say. But we'll see what they can do. It is going to be very hard for Curse. I would not want to be them right now with a hungry Cloud9 coming off a loss. They're just standing on the train tracks right now. But you talked about, you know, the pretty big percentage, I guess, you know, going up against Cloud9. For right. Curse there, they've gained a lot of fans with these uh, sort of unorthodox picks. And it's for good reason, because they've been successful with them over and over again. Ladies and gentlemen, we are onto the rift here. Third game of the day and day two. We'll see what they have for each other. It looks like the Orthodox Trinket starts, but the sweeper for Lemonation. So we'll see if that leaves Medios chances to come down in the open up bottom lane. Yes, yeah, starting out with a sweeper means they might actually look for a level one action. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very rare nowadays, but that's one of those things that could tip you off because Besides the early wards that are placed from these trinkets, there's nothing else to clear out, and there's almost no reason to grab that unless you're going for some sort of early action. All quiet on the home front. Now, the other thing he could do with it is wait until he sees someone in the bottom lane go ward. Since there's two spots you have to ward as this red side, the tri-bush and the river, um, if he clears one of those out, then just having Meteos on Elise will make the other team play more passive. And that could mm. relieve some pressure because this curse lane, if they are left unchecked, we talked about the very long range that it, they have. Yeah. They can actually put uh, a lot of early aggression down. I actually didn't see what Zekent leveled there quick. Uh, well, he's got a stun already, so right. going with the W. There's, oh, he has a W. All right. Can't charge that with anything unless you're, unless you're going to use the shield. Not very effective. <laughs> Touche. He could have started shields, <laughs> but then he won't be able to use the stun exactly. because he can't activate exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so we have a minute 47 seconds on the clock, and nobody has decided to invade. Once again, the wards have gone down, so we'll see them being cleared out as the junglers try to approach the lanes. Who will have the mistakes made by that time? We'll have to see if it really comes down to High and Boy Boy. They're going to be slow farming for now. They really don't get too much wave clear for another few levels. And I'm still going to keep my eye on the sweeper from Lemon Nation because he did not use it for level one invade. Both of the duo lanes decided not to help their junglers and opt for early, early pushing on minions. It's actually very surprising that the, the C9 team actually got that, that early push going. I guess Draven with double spinning axes already. You have to respect that early damage amplification. And they're still going straight for the push in the lane. They're not freezing this whatsoever. We'll see what they can do to keep themselves back. That leaves Medios other lanes to focus, though, if they are going to be pushed up and not need the counter game. Dominate now on his red. He's a little bit behind on Medios. I don't think it should cause too much of a problem. Yeah, so Elise is a jungler that has no problems if she doesn't get any help because she can use her Spiderlings to tank them, and she has so much percentage damage to starting off early that she can handle them herself. Whereas Wukong definitely would love that leash, but their bottom lane didn't want to sacrifice any time. Just happened that they got pushed in anyway. Dominate uh -oh. looking for the top lane. Rumble's one of those champions, very hard to gank, but he's actually on silence from the overheat. Not too much crowd control he has to deal with here as Quas is a little too far behind for the counter strike. A little bit of body block right there, not able to get in range to land the stun. So already aggression showed by Dominate. He went straight from those buffs and then back towards that top lane to really make something happen. And you can see Medios instantly reacting to Dominate showing in lane. Boom. He goes for the counter jungle, immediately heads to the opposite side, 
probably going to leave yeah. at least one wolf there. You can see High trying to make that even easier as he puts damage on Boy Boy. Neither of them, or ne neither, but he won't be able to help dominate if he gets to the jungle and finds Meteos. And the thing about counter jungling the blue side is that the white camp, you can't leave anything up since he's all by himself there, and it will respawn anyway. Basically, Meteos taking that is just him trying to take the gold that's closest to him. He's just trying mm -hmm. to not waste time over there because it is a very effective camp. Uh, pumped up to 65 gold now is actually should be the highest priority one and at least is one of the best champions in the game at taking that camp down even early taking whereas down many other yep. people struggle the rest of his wolves he's going to find that that white is gone as well so he knows meteos is somewhere in the bottom side of the jungle very nice pool coming in from boy boy he's going to have to stay careful and the auto laugh from vlad <laughs> classic uh it's very hard to gank the vlad early um, I mean, unless you get there before, you know, level one or level two, before he he levels oh. up that pool, he doesn't have to burn summoners to dodge those things. And Meteos looks like he's going to stay on a rampage right now. He's going straight to the top lane with the idea of either getting these golems or finding Dominate and Quas. A dive would definitely be dangerous because Jax can uh, pop his Counter Strike, and Dominate is feeling the same thing here. So he actually wastes some time because Dominate's able to smite away that golem. Medios losing a bit of time with a couple unsuccessful moves, mid and top. So the lanes can breathe easy for about half a second, knowing what the junglers are as they disappear back into the fog. Medios is still, he, he doesn't even want his own jungle. He has taken over Curses. So he does miss out on the double golem, the large double golem, mm -hmm. but he gets the large wraith. The large double golem actually worked more there. So pretty good exchange Great. as far as these jungles are concerned. Very nice play there, equalizing the net distance with the caliber. Or with the chain, I should say. Coming up on six minutes, a lot of and great aggression from Meteos, and both dominate trying to get themselves into the mix here. Now, Vladimir surviving very early here is great for Curse. Uh, Voiboy does not have kill potential on LeBlanc because he's got a jungle Wukong. Before Wukong hits level six, there's only damage from that mid lane. There's no CC at all. He can barely get a, a little slow by using his pool. So it's pretty mm -hmm. much all the moves to be made there or in high and Meteos' court since they're the ones with that uh, kill potential in that two versus two matchup. Looks like they're trying to bait Quaz into something, get that stun under the turret, and then the repel for the aggro. He's not going to attack him just yet, will it? Be first for Medios. Medios does go for the aggression first, but he repelled in, but Balls' Flame Spitter actually took that. It doesn't matter. They get first blood. Such a beautiful job by Balls baiting out the jump yeah. and the yeah. counter strike of Quas. After those two cooldowns have been used, you can see how Medios did not hesitate to repel in, and they go for the dive. That was just. Purely, purely an outplay. <laughs> High gets caught up there. Hemoplague won't be enough to put down the rest of the damage, but he does keep him from backing. Yeah, flash for Ignite trade yep. right there. Flash is a longer cooldown, so it's a pretty good trade for Boy Boy. And it also did delay a backing here for High. A whole minion wave will kill itself on the turret. The jungler is actually doing a good bit of vision control here. A pink and a regular vision ward being picked up to be put around the map, which isn't there yet. The whole map is covered in fog right now, so both teams put their hard hats on. I do like the very early pink ward, um, especially from the jungler, because they're roaming around and they can place it right. in those hard-to-get areas. So this pink ward from Dominate will probably last the longest um, that a pink ward will last in this game, since he got it so early. And really, it's only the junglers making roam so far. With high hitting six, though, if he's able to get off a good roam, then you, we've seen so many times how LeBlanc can snowball yeah. out of control. She has a 100% win rate in the North American LCS in her three picks in the first week. So there's really no reason if a team mains that to let it go. And we'll see if high has been kind of training that under his champion pool. So he's preempting uh, a roam top here by awarding in that... A uh, little bush along the path that he would take up. So he can see if any defensive wards are placed by Curse. Really, if you place your ward first, not only do you get vision, but you're also aware of uh, the enemy's wards. So you can work around the vision that you know they have. And you can see that Voiboy, Boy, he doesn't really itemize into the Chalice. He has to go straight Negatrons because he has no need for that regen. Yeah, early. Early Negatron pickup here. And he's going up against a magic heavy damage yeah. team. 
So LeBlanc and Rumble, just those two solo laners are enough to validate that item pickup. But oh, when yeah. you're facing the jungler of Elise too, uh, it seems like definitely the way to go here. And I, I like that early pickup. It is something we didn't really notice in Champion Select. A very AP heavy rounded team coming from Cloud9. We'll see if it comes back to bite them. They've gotten first blood with it so far. So far, so good. Nine minutes on the clock along with that first. And you can see the transfusion is canceling out that W damage as they trade. Yeah, I mean, it's it's very AP heavy, but one of the APs is getting beat on pretty Ooh, good here. Cyclone goes down. They're just sitting on the equalizer, but it's not going to be enough damage overall. Ball's going down. Great use by Dominate. As soon as he, you know, got that level six, he's looking to make a play with Cyclone. So visits from both, both junglers mm -hmm. top and kills for both uh, top laners. I like that. Dominate, stay true to the top lane, get the retribution kill, because Quaz was taken out earlier, so he's giving back a little. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We'll see if they trade it back in the end. Lemonation and Sneaky, they've been here the whole time in this lane. Ooh. I looking for a kill under turret. Oh, it's going to be big. The chain's going to hit. The ignite is on. One more tick, but he's going to live with a sliver. Just barely not getting it. And he actually pops his own passive there by tanking so many turret hits. The high <laughs> is now really low. So really all he got out of that, even though it was a great play, shoving Ooh. a minion wave into the turret again. You can't always per perfectly dodge every death sentence. A nice stand aside. He does not follow up with the catch on the axe. Man, Sneaky on Draven is just beasting this lane right now. He is destroying 100 CS already, and he's been stacking up Adoration this entire time. If they get off a gank bottom and he gets the last hit, he's going to get more than that Bloodthirster, and he's going to be more than enough AD damage that even though Cloud9 have all yeah. those AP threats we talked about, a Draven who gets one of those early kills and a good lane phase is going to be more than enough to worry about to make Curse buy armor. Sneaky is just one of those players with the, the flip the switch mentality. Whether he needs to be utility or this aggressive type for his team, he's just very good at it. He's great at CS too. I mean, that's spot on. 107 here at 11 minutes. And because they're able to shove up the lane, not only wow. uh, do they get control of that lane, but they're also able to get Dragon with the early uh, Dragon taking potential of Elise there. Nice little move, even though they didn't clear out that pink ward. <laughs> that little bush. All you got to do is just... Make a habit. You have to train yourself. Always, if you're going through that river. Oh, Lemonation a little too far forward. That sweeper is still on cooldown. There are a lot of wards around you, Lemonation, that need to be swept. Another lane gank from Dominate. Wukong excelling at those lane ganks because you can get that invisibility to get in range for your Nimbus Strike and the dash. Mm -hmm. um, able to close the distance there, even though it was well played by Lemon. You saw the flash go, go off immediately after right. the play. Close to getting out, but not enough. They knew they had a good amount of power in that lane. It looks like they weren't able to use it in the right instance. We're going to have a quick pause here. We look at Boy Boy's inventory, and that Negatron Cloak quickly goes into that uh, cloak, so he'll be quite good on that. Spectre's Cowl, sorry. Yeah, um, he could go that route, or mm -hmm. he could even build um, the AoE magic reduction that he could get from the Abyssal Scepter. A little bit more offensive uh, build there. But yeah, Boy Boy's really just biding his time. Even though we saw him uh, pop a couple summoners, both mid laners got really close to killing each other, actually. <laughs> In that top lane, it's actually going quite well for Paul, or quite back and forth for them. Mm -hmm. And with how good Sneaky's doing on Draven, it's kind of relaxing the pressure on the lanes. Even if Balls does get ganked again, Sneaky's so far ahead. And like we've said, Balls can always come back. Cloud9's in a pretty good spot so far in this game right now. Yeah, and you can actually really tell that... Um, when we bring up the map once again, their ward coverage is intense right now. They've got both sides, actually, of the river really blanketed in vision right now. Right. So the only way that Dominate can get off sex successful ganks is coming through lane and using the visibility, right. which is exactly what he's doing. So you have to tip your hat to him as well. Yeah, he Even found it in the bottom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he got one to work. And we said Lemonation Sweeper was on cooldown during that gank, so they were getting a little antsy with the comfortability in lane and... It took them, they took it for granted. They were able to get a kill on Curse's side. Right now we're getting Dominate reconnected to the game after his gank. He just ganked so hard he broke his game. You gotta be careful with that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't gank so strong. Bringing out the Wukong though. We've uh, been kind of tacking on to Dominate that he's been using the Gragas. He's been bringing out the Wukong, the Pantheon. So he's keeping the versatility going. And it's actually 
really having that come out of the jungle is nice for your team in picks and bans. Especially since they do like need a nice another source of damage for this team. And everybody's saying that's working now. Damage it, junglers are kind of... It really works with Wukong. Especially when he hits that level 11 and get level 2 ultimate. Mm -hmm. uh, the damage just shoots through the roof. It starts out at only 80 damage a second, which is you know, almost nothing. Um, and once it gets another level, or is it... It's 80 total. Um, it shoots through the roof. It's so much. Right. It turns uh, just from that knock-up CC into an actual killing potential with it. But. We'll see. We haven't really seen the Cyclone come into play except for on balls in the top lane, but that was with the help of Quaz, and we figured that's going to turn into a split push situation. So. It's 80 damage total. Okay. That's why I was so surprised. I was like, <laughs> 80 damage total from your ultimate. It's not much. So yeah, we, we make sure that everything's a still, teaser there. still locked in for Dominate. We have to think of, you know, coming into this game, the LeBlanc for high. It's not something that he's really played. He's kind of always had his champion pool of Gragas, unfortunately Teemo, and <laughs> playing Riven sometimes. But he's not had the greatest, you know, set of games. So this LeBlanc could be what they need and another ban that would open up those champions again for him. He does like playing a lot of assassins, but they're usually the AD assassins. That's right. Um, you're right. He likes to play Kha'Zix and uh, Riven and stuff like that. So LeBlanc a little bit different. Got to keep track of all your double W teleports. And this pause looks like Balls actually has a bit of a uh, tick with his peripheral, so he's going to get that fixed up. You want to make sure your mouse and your keyboard work well. Sometimes they just kind of power themselves off, and then you just replug them back in. Technology happens. Man, you should be <laughs> uh, IT man there, Riv. Have you tried turning it on and off? Yes. Is it plugged no. in? Genius. Are you clicking the right mouse button? Go help out Cloud9. I think they need to call in Dan, maybe. They Got it couple too, too many problems there. Absolutely. Starting into this game, it is 15 or starting in. Halfway through, we said that Draven Sneaky has a ton of CS, and it's actually about a 1,000 gold lead that has accrued coming in, even though First Blood went back and forth and it uh, went with an assist to Curse's side on their second. So we'll see if the money stays in their favor. Not too much on the Dragon front just yet. You can see Cloud9 with aggression. Yeah, the bottom lane is, seems calm now yeah. just because the curse lane is giving up ground, but it's a powder keg ready to explode. As soon as <laughs> Sneaky gets that first kill and cashes in all that adoration, it's going to be really, really rough. Boy Boy hitting that level 9, which means Transfusion is doing its max level. He's able to get a good amount of health back and start that wave clear out. So they may be starting to roam a little bit more from mid. Wow, and he's going super defensive, like you said. He's going for the Spectre's Cowl. Yeah. Um, not even going for the Abyssal Scepter there. So he will be lacking some damage. To be said, this is a great laning uh, build against, wow, LeBlanc. Uh, but... He's going to be lacking damage for the team fights. Maybe the next dragon that does come up, uh, he might not be able to add a whole lot. Quaz getting hit up once again. A little focus here. Now Meteos wants to give the help back over to Balls, and they are going to be able to take down Quaz. Great ultimate and great job there tanking the turret with Elise because she can disengage whenever she wants to, getting low. Uh, and then here we go, hooking in the clone, not the uh, ideal situation. I like the patience on everybody in Cloud9 that they didn't explode the clone right uh -huh. away. They're like, we think it's the clone. Boy Boy up in the top lane to stop a little bit of that pressure. And it looks like they're just trying to even everything out before they really make a move. We're only 1348 into this one, and both teams kind of in their face in the bottom lane. It's the one we've been looking at, Lemonation and Z Kent, and they're both trying to get their 80s kills. Yeah, as like we said, you know, that one's just waiting, waiting to explode, but... It's interesting how Voiboy, Boy, you know, he built really heavy for that lane. He can actually switch lanes because uh, he, that build will work really well going into Rumble as well. Right. And he's just looking to farm up towards that late game since he's going such a defense-heavy build here. Just getting Quaz on a quick reconnect. He's sitting in that top lane looking at the Cutlass build, Blade of the Rune King, but he's also put the Hex Drinker on himself because he's dealing with some magic damage from, as we said, Elise, Rumble. Those are... Painful ganks. And they just burned right through that Hex Drinker in the yeah, last one yeah. there, too. So even itemizing for it hasn't been able to survive. A couple of successful moves there from Elise going up top. That's always something that's scary. When you the other team is kind of forcing you to put a few extra items in your build, it puts a kink in that when you get there. Because Balls, Balls hasn't had to be like, I need to build a ton of something I won't use. He's got the armor that'll change into Randuance he uses later, or maybe the Zanyas he builds right away. And I'm 
interested to see where Ball's next move is because they took down the top turret and shoved up the minion wave. That's a lot of gold mm -hmm. there that Curse has to farm very far away from Dragon. So they've set up for the next Dragon pretty well here. They just need it to spawn now on the map, <laughs> and then they can go for it. It's going to be a big pickup. As we said, the gold lead's 2k, it's stretching a little bit. It was 1k, and just between that pause with that kill on Dequaz, they were able to get a little bit more. So they're taking advantages when they can, and definitely adapting to the movement of Curse. Let's see what Sneaky can do. He's back to lane. We just saw him get pushed out. Lemon Nation looking to be safe that they're not going to get sneakily ganked here on the bottom lane. Sneaky will not be sneakily ganked. <laughs> because Dominate's going to take his blue first. So much CS, though. 140 to 93. The closest is Boy Boy. We know Vlad's a, an a exceptional farmer in the game, but still, you got single target Draven. Dominate getting a little bit of harass. That's Oops. a wall right there, high. Nobody saw that. Lemon's nope. got your back. He made it over with that. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, that's why he's there. Nothing to see here. Three Two. pink wards down here for Cloud9 on their own side of the map. These pink wards aren't even placed in enemy territory. These are not offensive pink wards. No, the regular ones are up there. Yeah, so the regular <laughs> ones, which... Wow. Wow, four pink wards down on the map already at 14 minutes here for Cloud9. And they have three sweepers. Ah. That's weird. Dangerous red buff invade here. Very dangerous. They don't have a uh, jungler. A lot of movement coming up. And like you said, four... Pink wards. Vision ward definitely being one right now. And I only see one, two wards for Curse. Quas is going to get this, but Balls has vision because of that pink ward. And Quas knows that pink ward is still there. They only hit it twice. Yeah, Quas is definitely communicating. You can see on the bottom right of your screen, he's talking it out with the team. Their focus is a bit on this bottom lane, but nobody else is really hovering down. Going to be focused here onto Boy Boy. So they've almost got Sneaky to the point where they're fine leaving him solo. Um, and Lemon Nation, it opens him up to roam around the map to make plays or to help High get over those walls that he face plants into. It's good that Cop has actually got the Bloodthirster in his hands. He can start charging that up and somewhat combat the damage that Sneaky has, but not if he's been catching axes all day long. They have a great lane going on in the bottom between Sneaky and Lemon Nation right now, and nothing that Meteos has really had to tag on. Yeah, has, has, most of his uh, visits have been top here. I'm surprised that they weren't able to make anything happen pretty early um, in the mid lane. But as we saw, Vladimir, very annoying champion to gank, especially in yeah. a short lane because he does have that pool and invulnerability. Once you get a bit more health, you can try to just walk along with him after the pool and take him out. But yeah, no. actually, got to correct myself there. It's uh, You just can't target him. He's not invulnerable. That's a mistake a lot of people make. You can still kill him. Uh, right. Like he holds Ignite. ignite. He, you damage. saw the chain on him earlier. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. Getting the W wave clear down. And we're going to see High. He's getting up there in CS. He has just broken the 100 mark, but he's still about 30 behind Boy Boy. Crushing down the waves with Tides of Blood and Transfusion and allowing himself to roam. But it's only really been in the jungle. And that's where Meteos has been. Always invading. Yeah, you know, we saw a lot of early movements from both mm -hmm. junglers um, and successful ganks by both. But it's calmed down so much here. You can tell that Cloud9 were just waiting for that dragon to respawn. And they're making the call already as they do it for LeBlanc to rotate up top so they don't lose out on the minion wave either. They're trying not to sacrifice anything for this dragon and just gain that global gold uh, pretty much without having to sacrifice anything. Curse? Oh, they don't want to go to the turret. Yeah, we see Cop and Seacant stopping halfway up the hill and it looks like they're going to head back home. Cop in the mid lane though, as we said before, Vladimir not the best turret taker downer. Yeah, Boy Boy, especially going super defense here. Uh, you know, High is having to work overtime, just bouncing back and forth between top and mid lane, trying to clear waves once they get to the <laughs> turrets. But he's the perfect champion to do that because he yeah. can keep hopping this blue wall. He's jumped over the golem wall three times already. There he is into the top lane. And the rest of the team kind of switches up here. Now they're going to put the force into the mid, looking to crush down a structure on mid objective. I'm really waiting for Curse's first move because they've got the flashes on their amazing crowd control. Annie 
into Wukong, into Vladimir, into even a Counter Strike from Jax. Oh, man. Could, could be potentially. You know, on paper that sounds like yeah. It if, always sounds if good. If Cloud Nine are together, that is <laughs> that is going to be one hell of a combo. But hard to pull that off because Cloud Nine are very adept at playing against these uh, team fighting combos yep. that use area of effect CC. We saw them defeat. CLG, even though CLG had a great um, similar composition with mm -hmm. Area of Effect CC, they just spread out so well during the team fights and then re engage after the abilities are down. It's all about that Kitan fight right now. The champions that are very mobile and able to pretty much change your mind about the fight as soon as you hit it. That's a LeBronc. That's a Medio is coming in with all their damage. Balls in the mid lane now, as we see, it's still a lot of rotation, but it looks like it's all in Cloud9's control. And they're sticking with Quas solo farming. As we said, he's going to try and get to the point where he can be a strong split pusher. Without teleport, though, he's going to have to actually be able to defeat his opponent and create the pressure there. So he really needs a lot of help here because with the repeat visits from Medios, he hasn't gotten um, that nice early lead. And having to go with that Hexstringer delayed his combo of the Trinity Force plus right. the Blade of the Rune King. Another Hex Drinker being built up on to dominate. Very favorable item against this AP heavy team. Needlessly large rod for high as they're now able to get that ex bit of that explosive damage out. We're not going to quite see somebody get zeroed out with a Deathfire Grass Pit just yet. But a 3,000 gold lead means that it's Curse trying to protect their turrets right now and Cloud9 poking away. Since Cloud9 do not want to dive this turret, they have to make high rotate once again. They pull off the five man mid and send him up top to clean the minion wave. As soon as it gets there, he's able to arrive in time. And again, non action from both teams here. And how do you actually, when you're being sieged by a team with a rumble, how do you even get back on them if you want to? Because you're just going to equalize her. So the flashes, like I said, are all up here. If Curse want to initiate, they can pull the trigger. They just have to be sure that it's a good spot, and they need to land those abilities on multiple people. Because if they don't, and Cloud9 are able to dodge... It's got to be the on-paper all. The yeah. re-engage here is intense from Cloud9. They can turn on single targets very easily. We'll see what happens. Cop goes back to the bottom lane. Looks like Sneaky hasn't left that for quite some time either. 215 CS 20 minutes into the game. He is going to be a big Draven. And that defensive line of pink wards that we pointed out earlier is still up. That's why I like using them as defensive wards, because Curse will not make a lot of passes through your bushes on your side of the map. So they'll, they'll last for a very long time, whereas they used mostly yellow wards when they were in Curse's side. And those ones, invisible, you're going to have to get some sort of sweeper or... Uh, pink ward of your own to pull them out. And I feel like that works even better with how much Meteos was counter jungling, because we haven't even seen Dominate try to cross that river and get any camps of his. So those wards are alive for days. Yeah, the lone pink ward in Curse's jungle <laughs> just taken out now. And we see they're trying to actually put some pink wards of their own down. They do have one starting out by Wraiths now. Looks like they're trying to gain back a little bit of ground, because their resources and towers are falling quickly. I do have to... Um, applaud high though because I always am rooting for the assassins to pick up their own sweeper so they can create their own picks and they don't have right. to rely on their team to clear out vision for them. He has got it on LeBlanc. Very excited for that because LeBlanc is the one that's looking for uh, those picks right now. She's got her Deathfire Grass. She's at the point where she wants to be in the position to 100% one of these guys. They actually just going out sweeping a ward up by Wraith to make sure they can do it. As soon as possible, sweeping that out, he actually heads towards the top lane because he's got some minions to farm. Yeah, he's he's really just been on cleanup duty. This <laughs> LeBlanc has not had the opportunity the to get LeBlanc. into position for those kills because he's rushing back and forth trying to clean up all of these minion waves. It's not working as well as it did on Teemo, but this is basically what he did on Teemo. Run to a lane, clear it out, run to a lane, clear it out. Right now... Their, their mushrooms are those pink wards, and they're keeping the vision up in their favor. That, that W max on the block that everybody does Easy now, wave clear. It's pretty much the only way to go, especially if you're going to play like this. We got 3,000 gold in the favor of Cloud9, which Cruz has actually been doing a good job of keeping quite consistent. Yes, they are behind, but they are not letting that grow to a 
terrible amount, and it's what's really been keeping them in the game. We haven't seen a full team fight of this damage amplification yet. Yeah, I mean, well, since they're they're taking the non-action path and they're just farming up, trying yeah. to rely on the Vladimir and the Jack scaling, they're going to continually seed these dragons away to Cloud9. So the gold lead will increase. It just takes um, that respawn dragon every six minutes trying to wait on that for the extra gold for Cloud9 to build up their lead more and more. It just makes it so much harder when you easily give three dragons away like that, but Curse can't do much. They are biding their time until they can get a group fight. We'll see the full fruition of that damage. Maybe now. Are they going to try to lead something up? No. Just two that wards. Three wards? Two, two wards. <laughs> Lord Nation Pink has wards. His, yep. his work cut out for him. Six auto attacks. Going to be strenuous. He's probably scary. He's like, he doesn't know what's on the other side of that wall, though. So that's what the lantern is for there. Well, yeah, uh, after it went down. Six auto attacks took way too many. Yeah, it took too long. Right. <laughs> the lantern ran out by the time he had to clear all those. More Cloud9 in the middle. Looks like we may have a storm here in a second. Yeah, so I really want to see if Curse decide to have Dominate try and initiate by going in invisible and then using the dash plus Cyclone, or if they just rely on Zekent's Flash Tibbers, because that one is, pre is instant. And mm -hmm. if Dominate uses his W anywhere near Vision, Cloud9 will notice that he stopped moving and just immediately start backing off, which makes that engage hard. Oh, man, going for the four-man oh, bushwhack. Over the wall, High over the wall. Where's the board? Possibility. Oh, he tries to go. He gets the what? chain on the first one. He's got the blue buff. He gets the second chain. There's the damage. There's the last Q from High, and the fight's already engaged at the bottom of the Baron Kobe. The ultimate comes down. A beautiful hit from Draven. Sneaky getting a kill for himself. Boy Boy gets turned on. Very low damage there, and he can't spell vamp enough life back. It is going to be High going down, uh -oh. but they turn the fight back onto Cop, and they may just turn to Baron. Sneaky got a kill in there, too. Draven just shot through the roof. He's got a huge amount of gold. Oh, get in front! Oh, this is going to be a very scary Baron. No, it's no just way. Kate up. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Baron says, get out of my house. And not have. Uh, he almost took down Lemonation there. <laughs> he almost took down a lot of them. There were two, three that were low. All right, so up top, we already saw the high kill, but Lemonation goes in and gets the play. That's what I was talking about, the difficulty of the engage with... Wukong, if you get off a four ultimate like that, then it's going to be very hard to finish. These are the Draven Adoration stacks coming in. Another good play on top of the Rumble ulti. Wow. And Decimates Quas. That was a picture perfect fight coming in for Cloud9. And for Curse, needed to be more grouped up in that fight. 26 minutes in. It's now a definitive lead for Cloud9. 6,000 gold has been spread between them and Curse, and two turrets were grabbed. I have to say, that was a beautiful job by Lemon, keeping everyone yep. on top of Rumble Ultimate for as long as possible. They're one of the only teams that runs this champion. They've had so much practice working with it, and when Balls lays down his ultis in good areas, they do a great job of following it up. Only 44 minions, or 34, I should say, away from two or 300. Uh -oh. Two, zero, and one. It's sneaky. You can see him in the front of that fight trying to put down the first bit of damage. His flash is actually up from the last fight. He was able to quickly avoid the Wukong ultimate with the W steroid. Get that adrenaline rush in. And we'll see him go and force the dragon again, Kobe. They want to force this fight. Sneaky's so powerful, they can easily do this. And they have Elise as their jungler. It's just a two-man screening squad down here of Lemon Nation and High trying to ward off the cursed team away from Baron. Sacrificing one outer turret for Baron, 100% worth. Yeah, they get a good move onto that one. The minion wave is in their favor, but they're not able to use any more of it because they still have to respect the Baron up Cloud9 now. This is going to be tough. I mean, Curse waited so long. Wow, Lemon does get a hook, but nobody around. Huh. Nice hook on Not the Clone. So that's the answer. What happens if Lemon lands a hook and nobody's around to see it? They walk away. <laughs> It's finally been answered. What was I talking about, though? Oh, yeah. Curse. <laughs> Curse were waiting so long for that uh, per picture perfect engage. You know, they gave up all, all these dragons and all these objectives because they wanted to get to the point where they could land a level post level 11 Wukong ult with, a t with an Annie Tibbers. But since Annie was caught out before it even started, they never got the opportunity to stack those CCs. And it's Good. really going to be the Cloud9 show now. Lord, the mobility of Cloud9 is intense. They just went from mid to top with lantern tosses, high going over walls, and Curse couldn't even react to that.
They have no power here. They are lost the Baron on top of all the gold that they just gave up. Too sneaky with those cashing in the Adoration stacks. It's very difficult for them. They have to turtle inside of the inhibitor turret uh, line right now and hope for a poor dive from Cloud9 to capitalize. Slowing things down a little bit here as High is going to be backing. He does go for that full kill potential build, but the Rabadon's not able to be squeezed in there before the Void Staff. A little bit of cut and gold it. Maybe High thought he wasn't going to get it, or just knew he could build that right off the bat. So, needlessly large rod is picked up for him as he's looking to finish up the Rabadon's next. Boy Boy's build has been pretty recipe as well. He went for that Spectral's Cowl, then he had the Revolver, and now he had the Mask, or Hunting Guys actually previously, so he's still putting things together. Yeah, he went defensively for the lane phase, yeah. which worked. He, he was able to survive just fine against LeBlanc slash... Oh, well, this is the other option. I said the only option was the Turtle. The Fanatic part. That's not, a, that's not true. I was wrong. You can also <laughs> hope for a bush, bush gank on a few unsuspecting members. Cloud9, though... Have to play it careful, and wow. even though they're so far ahead, they're sticking as a five-man squad. Bush gank does not work if the whole team comes into your bush. But this is what they need. They have to see everybody just bunched up together. Emo Plague with the Cyclone on top of that is going to be huge for them, but it's almost too conditional to have it happen. Like you said, the Wukong ult is very hard to hit. Yeah, uh, so as soon as they see the whole team is together, they're probably going to have to back off. Oh, uh, man. Kirk's going to wait for the day. Did he cop? No, he didn't get it. I don't it. know, man. Hard, Hard hat's on. I grabbed that sucker. Hard oh, hat's on. Oh, they go in. The Flash Timbers. The Equalizer is sitting on the entire team, but Cloud9 is shredding. Both teams are actually getting shred right now as the focus is perfect. Now on to Quaz, turning on to Boy Boy. It is going to be good Hemoplay kills from Vladimir, but it's not enough. Balls comes out on top with a triple kill. And that was the desperation call right there. They knew that they had to pull off the combo to make it work, and even though the whole team was coming over to the bush, still tried to pull it off, I like the effort because they know that they are just going to lose the slow game if they wait it out, and yep. they went for the big play that could get them back in this. Zekin leading it off, and they land two people, which is pretty good, setting up for Dominate to uh, knock up a couple here. They end up getting sneaky off of this, so they take out that huge damage threat that's going to be life-stealing if you don't take him down early. Only problem is the rest of Cloud9 still around able to finish this one off. That's how they kind of wanted this to work out, though, yeah. with the Tibber setting up that Cyclone and following it in with the Vlad and Jack's damage just a bit too late because they didn't get the first team fight around Baron to go well. A very high risk strategy and situation they tried to pull off. With that loss, the minion wave was right behind them. That flows into an inhibitor turret in the bottom lane being down. And that inhibitor open with the lead that Cloud9 has is very stressful for Curse. Yeah, and you know, I, I do respect that call. Going, just playing for it. Trying Jad, to make Jad it said last time, if you're behind, you know, it's, he likes the teams that make those moves. They try. Sometimes it fails, but you gotta try. You don't want to just lose by default slowly. Yeah. But now, they're going to have to choose a different bush because <laughs> Cloud9 are going to be looking at that one. They got that one mowed. Yeah. Mowed it over. <laughs> that one is yeah, toast. 11 to 5. The kills, not really a huge factor in this game. They've won the lanes quite a bit. The CS is so much gold coming from these teams. 288 to 240 there. 250 to 239 is actually Shifter, oh, or High rather, has been able to start beating Void Boy because of his uh, babysitting of the lanes that were being pushed in his farming. And that magic resistance isn't going to help at all here. Three Void Staffs, and then Sneaky's got a Last Whisper. So any sort of defense that you try and put up, they're going to have a penetration, percentage penetration, to get right through it. So at this point, you, you just have to build offense if you're cursed and hope for picking people off, getting uh, insta-gibs on people, and relying on your CC as your defense, and then just pouring everything, all of your money, into offensive power. Offensive power like a Zeke's Herald coming out in Elimination, actually. Great pick up there. The Talisman Ascension finish for them. He's looking to give Sneaky a little bit more. So even on top of Bloodthirster-fed uh, Draven here, <laughs> who is really hard to take down because he life steals so much with his axes mm -hmm. amplifying the base damage. On top of that, Zeke's Herald. I mean, Chris is going to have to burst it down. Whoa. Like that? That's the burst down on the other side. The flip side of it. Got going to get the Hemo Plague out of this one. Dominate's going very low and he flashes out of the fight. Cloud9's able to pretty much just surround Curse and take them out in that engagement. 
Boy Boy didn't even get to play the game here uh, for the last push. Cloud9 looking to end it. It does look pretty definitive. 33 minutes into the game, a 14 to 5. Cloud9 was hungry coming off of last week's loss. They don't let it happen again, and they get the win over Curse.